podcasting from my closet in northern Japan, this is Reimagining Hustle, a podcast for entrepreneurial parents creating a life where business and parenthood live peacefully in the same space. I'm your host, Roxanne Market, a mom of two, micro business coach, and serial entrepreneur on a journey to prove that it is possible to do what you love without sacrificing all your precious time. Let's do this. Welcome back to Reimagining Hustle. I am already so excited to introduce my guest today. I have Sarah Dickinson with me. Sarah, I know it's been a rough week, but how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Everything is going and everything's coming up sunshine today. Good, good. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear it. Sarah has been gracious enough to allow us to reschedule this podcast. We've had some funny um, family issues and, and Sarah's been just glorious. So thank you for your your generosity and and also like your ability to be on top of things in the middle of chaos in your family is just mind blowing and admirable. So my hat's off to you. Lots of practice, let me tell you. Lots of practice. <laughs> Sarah, will you tell us about you? Tell us about the work you do. And I know you have a really interesting journey that has brought you where you are. So will you tell us a little bit about that too? Okay. So um, I'm talking about staying organized. I was a homeschooling mom to a neurospicy daughter. Okay. So that's, there's a lot of organization that has to yeah. happen with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I love to write. And as my girl got a bit older and didn't need as much one-on-one -on -one attention, uh, I started doing piece work for a digital marketing company and helping university students write essays and being a coach for authors. And as I was working with them and doing this, um, I discovered just how much I love email marketing and writing newsletters. Mm -hmm. My whole life, I have been a relationship builder. I really love everybody's stories and hearing about stories. So um, I just fell in love with newsletters. Um, and I also discovered that many business owners really struggle with their newsletters and their email lists whether it's finding time to create content or the tech setup, because there's so many platforms to uh, choose from or figuring out their lead magnet or their freebie. Um, I just found that there was just so many people that found it daunting and it would drop to the bottom of the priority list. So um, after my girl graduated high school, which wasn't ever supposed to happen, Mm. Um, yeah, she's autistic and, um, my whole life was wrapped up in raising her. And when she was in grade eight, <clears throat> um, the whole plan was, was she would probably get sort of the, the token graduation and she would live with us for the rest of our lives. And we would help her with living and life skills and that kind of thing. But she is an inspiration to me daily and stubborn as a mule. And she just put her head down and by grade 12, she graduated with honors and is now at university. Oh my word, I have goosebumps. That's so cool. Yeah, she is. She inspires me daily. Yeah, I can so, see why. Yeah. But the problem was, was that my whole identity was wrapped up in being a mom. Mm -hmm. And now she's off and I have another neurospicy child and they had graduated. So now my entire identity is like I've I have I'm having a midlife crisis. Um, at the same time, the lady that um, I was doing the digital marketing for, uh, she her company went a different direction and they didn't need me anymore either. So I lost. I felt everything. like I lost everything. Yeah. Um, but I have very supportive friend who's also an entrepreneur. And uh, along with her, along with the lady that I was doing the digital marketing for, they both said, you know, you're really good at what you're doing for us. You should go out on your own, start your business, do your own thing. And so that's what I did. I started my business, The Nerdy Quill. I leaned into the fact that people struggle with their newsletters because I love newsletters and I could talk email all day. Um, so now I help business businesses run by women and folks in the queer community uh, build the connections with their audience, whether I'm writing their content for them or I'm coaching them on how to do it and the sort of ins and outs with lead magnets and setups. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. That's incredible. And it's so interesting to me because I, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for a hot minute. And I've met my fair share of entrepreneurs, and I genuinely think you are the first person to be like, 
I love email newsletters. Let's talk about it. <laughs> this like I'm I'm a little almost taken aback. So talk to me about. I mean, just the love of email, I feel like is something that you either like you love it or you hate it. I don't know that that there's necessarily like you can learn to love it. But for entrepreneurs, so we have a lot of people listening to the podcast who are moms with young kids. So mm -hmm. I know your kids are a little bit older, but moms with young kids who are trying to start a business and that idea of an email newsletter or email marketing genuinely shuts everything down. Like they're like, I can't do a business because I don't want to do email marketing. So what do you tell those people in that moment? Um, that it doesn't, it seems very overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Um, when you are super busy and you just do not have time for extra content creation, everyone is creating some sort of content, right? Whether you're writing a blog or whether you're posting on social media or whether you have a podcast, Everybody who has a business is creating some sort of content and you can just take that content and repurpose it as a newsletter. So it doesn't have to be, you know, brand new stuff that you have to come up with every week. And it, it doesn't have to be as overwhelming as it seems. The best way to do it is to just break down the steps, right? So um, the first thing you want to do is choose a platform. And then once you've got that, you move on to the next step is, okay, maybe I need a freebie. And then you sort of figure out what that is. And then when it comes to content creation, um, you just, you use what you got. And, and I believe that, uh, we're all, um, as humans, we're all stories and experiences and that those are the best newsletters is when you're sharing your stories and your experiences because that's what's brought you to this point. And you had so much knowledge in your head. And that's the best way to write a newsletter is just like you're writing to a friend. So it doesn't have to sound perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, you definitely don't want it to be salesy, like a sales email, right? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be pushy or anything like that. It just, just write a letter to a friend. Mm. Okay, that's a great reframe to just write a letter to a friend. Mm -hmm. How I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you like very direct. How often do you recommend people send out an email newsletter? Once a week. Okay, that is that is the sweet spot. Yeah. Um, every other week is okay if you like. It's okay, but you definitely don't want to do it less than that because okay. people will forget who you are and they'll be like, "Who the heck is this in my inbox?" Delete, and yes. that's not helpful at all. Okay. Once a week, you stay top of mind. They know who you are. They know what to expect from you. And um, sometimes you can do twice a week if you're, you know, really on top of things and you yeah. have lots of stuff to talk about. But once a week is kind of the sweet spot. Okay. Okay. So I know that my listeners will also be dying to ask because this is this is one of those questions that I get a lot. Is there a recommended day that you send out a newsletter? Well, it really depends on your audience. I, for myself, I send out my newsletter on Monday morning because okay. that's when I'm freshest for the week. And like for me, I'm freshest for the week. That's when I can open things. A lot of people will say um, like Friday morning or Thursday morning because if you hit them on Monday morning, their email, their inbox is just full. Yeah. So hit them later, right? Um. The other thing is, is you don't want to, the one thing you don't want to do is send it at like eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. You want to send it, you know, 10 or noon, right? So because they've gone into their email at eight o'clock or nine o'clock when they start work and there's a hundred emails. Mm -hmm. But when they go into their email again at 10 or at noon, there's only going to be one or two or three, but yeah, yeah, yours yeah. is going to stand out. It's not just going to get lost in the hundreds that are already there. That's, I love this because I feel like I'm just like pulling you for all the information I can. That's very yes, selfish. Sure. But also, I love it. And I appreciate you being so forthcoming with it. So yeah. I want to, I want to talk a little bit about this shift that you made from you were an employee and then you shifted to being a business owner, being an entrepreneur. Yep. And anybody who's been an entrepreneur knows that there's this, it's almost like you have to split your brain and half of it gets to do all the things in the business and half of the brain gets to do all the things on the business. How was that shift for you? It was really, really tough um, because 
and I love marketing. Yeah. And I love um, creating content and writing emails. But there were pieces of marketing that I really don't like. Um, and when I first started um, my business, I thought, oh, OK, well, my business is going to fail if I'm not on social media. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you that that's not true. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So um, I really tried to force myself to stay consistent on social media. And it was just so draining. And I couldn't I couldn't get myself to do the stuff I love because I was so busy doing the stuff I hated. Mm. And then I eventually gave myself permission to just stop doing social media. Or I shouldn't say that. I gave myself permission to stop being consistent on social media. I still do post on social media now and again. Yeah. But it's not a big focus. Mm -hmm. And so I shifted my focus to what I was good at. And so that was obviously writing my newsletter. It was talking to people and um, telling them about my business, right? And when I made that shift, I was able to in I was able to just sort of go all in and really enjoy my business. In the beginning, it was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna write all this stuff. Oh yeah, and I have to market, right? And, oh, I must be on Instagram to do that. Well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that you said that, too. I So my background, I have a, an undergraduate degree in marketing and a master's degree in communication where I focused on social media. And I will be the first one to tell you, you don't need to be on social media. And so I love that you said that. that that's been your experience as well. So thank you for okay. sharing that. So, Sarah, what does success look like to you as you've made all these shifts, as you kind of taken yourself back you know almost from like this role of only mother and you kind of redefined and reclaimed yourself what does success look like to you so success right at the moment is sort of financial based mm -hmm. so I have two goals that are just gonna once I hit those goals like I'm going to be like yep I've made it the first one is uh, having a house. I want to own a larger house so that my kids have somewhere to come home to after they move out. Mm -hmm. um, my my parents' house is teeny, teeny, tiny. It's like it's a little two bedroom and I have five brothers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you're um, on top of each other when you're. Yeah, yeah. Like Christmases and Thanksgivings are a little tricky. Yeah. So that's that's my big thing. And then my other thing that I'm really um, working hard towards is I want to retire my partner because I really like him. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of him making me tea all day while I work just sounds luxurious. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for the luxury. That's right. He's not particularly old. He's not ready for retirement. Like he's not a retirement age. But I'm like, so I'm going to make enough money to support us both because he's been supporting me for years. Yeah. And I'm like, and then you can come home and just make me tea all day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is he on board? No, oh, totally on board. Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I would be. That's amazing. Oh, what what great goals, too. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. So I would love to know how parenting, especially neurospicy kids. And I love that you use the term neurospicy. That's so <laughs> it's just so much labor. I love it. it it's so great with our family. <laughs> <laughs> so how has parenting these two amazing kids of yours, right? Two, right? How has being a parent during this journey into entrepreneurship changed you as a person? Because obviously it's going to play a, a huge effect in, in all the roles, but how about you as a person? Yes. Yeah, so right from the beginning, when I first started doing the piecework and now, especially now that I'm trying to run, my, I'm doing my own business. Um, I really had to learn how to set and stick to boundaries um, because my whole life is sort of wrapped up in being a parent. And, you know, that was the only goal I ever had was to be a parent. I didn't, yeah. you know, I never wanted to be a doctor or an airplane pilot. I just ever wanted to be a parent. Yeah. Um, setting boundaries and then learning how to stick to them, especially around my time, has been has been a journey. Um. I didn't really do well at the beginning and um, set those expectations with them. And I found, you know, like super burnout was happening. But yeah. the more I do it, the better it is. And the funny thing is, is the better I stick to those boundaries, the more independent my kids get. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you all benefit from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Do you, it, you talk about kind of this learning boundaries. For those who are listening who are like, oh, not this darn B word again. Like, can you give us some wisdom there as to what it's like being in the learning process of learning boundaries? There's a lot of uh, self-talk about how it's okay to have boundaries. So I've done a lot of, I, I call it mind trash. Oh, so I have, okay. I, I have a lot of mind trash around whether it's okay for me to do something on my own that doesn't include my children. Mm -hmm. And that mind trash creates, you know, a lot of guilt and a lot of, um, uh, like, I don't feel a I don't feel adequate, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of self-talk and giving myself permission that mm -hmm. it's okay to set this boundary. Nobody's going to die, right? Mm -hmm. No one's going to die if I am working right now, yeah. right? Lots of parents work. Yeah. So it's okay. And the fact that I work from home, it's, you know, lots of parents leave the house. So if something really major happened with the kids, at least I'm home, right? Right. Right. So it's okay for me to set those boundaries and really reminding myself over and over and over, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It is safe. You're safe to set boundaries. Your kids are safe when you set boundaries. And I mean, honestly, when our kids are really, really little, we're setting boundaries for them all the time, right? Like right. don't touch the stove, don't run into the street, right? Yeah. We're setting boundaries for them all the time. Why is it so hard to set boundaries for them when they're older? Or, you know, why is it so hard for us to set boundaries for us that care for us? Does that make sense? It does make like, sense. And it's so interesting. You're right, because we do this. We are, you're, it's funny. I, I don't know if you've ever read the book Heckity Peg, but I was reading the book Heckity Peg with my son last night. And in that book, the mother tells her children, don't let in strangers and don't play with fire. And sure enough, in the story, the kids let in a stranger and play with fire, right? And my son pauses and he looks at me and he goes, why would they do that? Their mom was trying to keep them safe. And I'm like, thank you, young child. You know, mm -hmm. right? And it's, just, it's boundaries, right? And it's like this lesson in boundaries, even through a little fairy tale. And so it's, but you're right. It's so interesting that we, that that changes for yeah. us. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's so yeah. easy. It's easy as a parent to set boundaries for your children because that's how you keep them safe and that's how you teach them to be good humans. Right. But it's so much more difficult when it comes to yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to set them for your kids. It's also safe to set them for you. Mm. Do you ever experience guilt around setting oh. those boundaries? Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> I think time. mom guilt. I think mom guilt is real no matter who you are, no matter what your job whether you're stay-at-home mom or whatever you do, yeah. mom guilt is just a thing. And you, you just got to, you have to remind yourself that you are doing the best you can and it is fantastic. Whatever you're doing is great and keep doing it, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. yeah, mom guilt. <laughs> I love that. And like I said, like I said, the better I stick to the boundaries, the more independent they get, right? Mm -hmm. Like suddenly they don't need me to make them lunch anymore. They can make lunch themselves, right? Yeah. Because I've set this boundary that this is what I'm working, right? Oh, you need yeah. a snack? There's the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has that helped with the guilt, do you think? Has, has really sticking to those boundaries made the guilt better or worse, I guess? Um, well, it, initially, <laughs> initially it made it a whole lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. But now that I've, now that I've, um, learned more about setting boundaries, I've been able to stick to them more and I do a lot of work and, you know, it's when I feel, I start feeling guilty. No, yeah. Sarah, it's safe to set boundaries. It's okay. You're safe. Your kids are safe. Um, I have seen my kids, you know, learn around my schedule, you know, and, they are more um, independent now. Yeah. And so because I'm seeing them grow along with me, it really reduces that guilt. Mm. Man, I get goosebumps as you talk about it. That's so cool. <laughs> Sarah, what do you wish people knew about being a parent, two neurospicy kids, and being an entrepreneur? 
all at the same time. Don't do it all yourself. Uh, you're going to need help and do not be afraid to ask for it. Mm. That is, and that's something I learned um, when my kids were young um, and it doesn't, and then now that I'm doing a business, it's absolutely like imperative yeah. that you give yourself permission to not have to be super mom and do everything because you're just going to get stretched out in 10 different ways. And if you don't make self-care a priority, hello, burnout. Yeah. Right. So whether it's hiring a cleaner once a week or um, if you're in your business, hiring a BA to take some of the stuff off your plate, right? Hire Give someone to help with your email marketing. I'm just saying. There you go. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll plug yeah, it for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just having some help, you know, having um, having a sitter. Oh, let me tell you, when my um, when I was homeschooling and still trying to do the work for the digital marketing company, like hiring a sitter once a week. So that my husband and I could, you know, have a couple of hours of our own time to sit and watch like a whole episode of television without being interrupted. Yeah. It was it was brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, just, you know, don't be afraid to give yourself the permission to to take care of yourself and ask for help. I feel like that ties in so perfectly as well to what you were saying about boundaries. Right. When you okay. do have boundaries and you say, OK, this is the boundary. So if this is going to happen, I do need help. I think mm -hmm. that there's, they, they really do go hand in hand. Yeah. For sure. There, Sarah, I want to ask you a question around the name of the podcast. So those who've listened before have heard this story, but when I first started my business, I was not a parent and I very much bought into hustle culture. It felt so good to me. The hustle, 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 go, 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 work hard and then work harder because whatever right and that was that was very much the mindset and then I had my first child and my whole world stopped mm -hmm. and I knew immediately that the path that I was on was not sustainable so I've been on this quest to reimagine hustle since then so I would love to know how do you reimagine hustle in your life so in my life it's all around marketing um, because Although I love newsletters and I love to create newsletters, I don't like mar I don't like marketing myself. Yeah. Um, I I love talking about other people, but when it comes to talking my, about myself, I'm I hold back quite a bit. It's a, a little uncomfortable. So um when I first started, like I had said that that was where my hustle was. Was it just hustle, 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 post here, post there, try and get the clients do all the things. Mm -hmm. And I burnt out pretty quick and realized that no, 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 no. I need to find a way to market my business that feels totally organic, that makes me happy. And so I just walked away from Instagram because I don't Instagram or TikTok very well. Yes. And I, I leaned into um, having, going to networking events and talking to people because I like to do that. I like to hear people's stories. Um, building my newsletter list. And since I gave myself permission to be able to do that, um, I've got so much more bandwidth to in do the things that I enjoy in my business. And then also um, because I'm not constantly, you know, going, 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 I have more time with my family. So that's that was me reimagining my hustle was rather than spending, you know, 12 hours a day trying to force myself to do things that didn't feel organic to me. I just went, nope, I'll find another way. I love that. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Sarah, you are inspiring to me. This is so fun. Before we find out, we need to find out where uh, we can get more of you. But before we do that, will you please give us a 30 second pep talk for other parents on this journey of entrepreneurship? Absolutely. You got this. I'm not going to lie. It's not always easy, but neither is only being a parent or only being an entrepreneur. So just give yourself the space to do what you love, keep the faith, and you and your family will thank you for it. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I'm great. That was pep talk here. No, it but... was perfect. It was perfect. Okay, Sarah, tell us, tell us everything. We need more of you. So I know you don't do a lot of social. Tell us where we can find you online. Okay, so my website is thenerdyquill.ca. 
Um, and you can also find me on Facebook at The Nerdy Quill. Um, I do post fairly regularly on my Facebook. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Instagram at The Nerdy Quill, but you're not going to see very much. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's awesome. And we'll make sure that we link everything in the show notes. And if you're looking for somebody to help you with your email marketing, I know Sarah is going to be a perfect, perfect opportunity for you to work with. So Sarah, this has been an absolute treat for me. Thank you for the gift of your time. Thank you for just, uh, for me, it's the morning. It's really, it's fairly early here. And this has been a perfect way to start my day. So I really appreciate it. Oh, and it's uh, quite late in the afternoon where I am. And so this has been the perfect way to end my day. I've really had a good time. Thank you so much for having uh, me. Win-win. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for listening to Reimagining Hustle with Roxanne Merkett. If you like the show and want more, check out reimagininghustle.com and please leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back next week with another episode. See you soon. See you soon.